Do you remember this? A few weeks ago, I showed you what I call my drill bit butcher's block. It sits on the back of my drill press and it's got every bit that I ever use, right at my fingertips. When I'm done with the bit, instead of putting it back inside the cumbersome box that I lazily think that I'm gonna get to by the end of the day, I put them away as soon as I'm done using them. That way, unlike my careless nature, I never lose bits. If you're interested in that video, it'll be at the end of this video and in the description down below. I'll assume now that you've already watched the video and saw the part where I said this and see if this is just something that becomes really cumbersome and annoying. And I did run into a problem that I have to admit here now. Let me explain myself. Through the entire process of designing and then building it, I use my drill press the right way with the drill bit sitting right at the top of the surface ready to be pulled down. While this is the ideal way that you're supposed to drill things, which of us really moves the table every single time that we put a piece of wood on the top? Usually what happens is we're ready to drill something, we run to the drill press, we put it on, we put our, our bit in, and we pull it down. In this situation, my drill bit butcher's block does not work. As you can see, as I pull the handle down, I bump into the back of my spade bits. Now, to be fair, I could take the drill bit butcher's block off every time that I have that kind of situation where I could bump into the back, but I really created this so that it could be used at any time and not used with that kind of cumbersome movement of the blocks and putting it back on and all that. Instead of scrapping the drill bit butcher's block completely, I decided to go back and redesign the handle. Now redesigning the handle kind of fixes some of the problems I've had with the drill press handle in the past, and that is that you get to a point where it's difficult to kind of spin it around if you're using it with one hand, which most of us do our drilling with one hand, and then you kind of have to reposition it so that you can keep drilling. Not only does it fix my drill bit butcher's block problem with it bumping into the back, it also fixes the problem that I've been dealing with for a long time with the handle. With that explanation out of the way, let me show you what I came up with. Now, something I forgot to mention is that I only use my top handle. I don't use the other two that come out here. This is a really good tip because having all three of them, you're never using them hand over hand. You've always got your hand on the workpiece, so Having three is kind of ridiculous. It never made sense. Although again, you have that problem where you can grab it at a different angle and you can have more leverage as you go down farther. But this is what I came up with. Now that I use this, I'm not hitting that back block. Just a really fluid motion. Now at the same time, I have a lot of pushing power all the way around. And I think I get a little bit more leverage when I use this too, because I think it's a little bit longer. Now I'll show you quickly how I put this together. To build this, this is all I really need. These five different pieces. And honestly, I don't even really need to have the handle, but I like to be able to grab onto something and spin it instead of just having something twist in my hand like this. So this is what we're gonna do. The threading that I have here fits inside my drill press handle. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is cut this off right here. Now with this cut, I need to take the second tube here and I need to cut it off at this length right here. This end needs to fit inside of the hole, but we've got two problems. The first problem is where the seam comes together through the center. I could try to find some way of grinding that down, but I, I'm not going to. The second is that this is just a little bit too big. So I'm gonna cut a groove down the side of this and then we're gonna check it up on the drill press and we're gonna sand it down so that it fits inside. I'll go ahead and add a galvanized cap to the top. That way I don't mess up the threads too much. At this point, I added my 45 degree angle. I'll go ahead and attach this. I did make the handle, but I'm not showing how I made it in this video. I've got a separate one on the side. It's about a minute long. It is one of the bite sizes that I made that explains it. It's a very thin tube. It's really nice. I added a little WD-40 to the bolt, so this slides on really well, like that. And then this attaches up here. Now this is a pipe, so this is gonna be a little bit tapered. I'm just gonna wedge it on. Thank you so much for watching, and if you design and build drill presses, especially in the handle division, Make sure that your people call my people and we'll figure out some kind of payment for this idea. I want to thank my patrons and invite you to become a patron where you'll get early access as well as seeing some of the secret upcoming projects that I have going on. 
Thank you, Michelle B., Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Tommy QR, Zach Finch, Rich Lightfoot, and James T. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at MakeThingsWithRob, and remember to keep making things. Thank you.